Hey everybody, today we're going to be doing something just a little bit different. I'm going to be showing you how I've been making my videos of late. We're going to talk about my green screen tech, we're going to talk about my microphone, and how we put it all together after we're done filming so that it all works. So first, let me switch my camera around. So you can see I'm using three different lights, two to light the green screen. They're not really designed for that, but they're working pretty well. And then one here to light the face. I've got my Osmo Pocket on a tripod with a Wi-Fi adapter so I can see what I'm doing. And then I've got the Zoom H3 VR, which I'll explain why I'm using that later, but it's a great little setup. Now I'm gonna switch over to the actual Pocket Osmo. getting centered here so now you're on that camera that's on the tripod and so let's go through the setup right here I've got you're gonna hear some handling noise this is the microphone you're hearing right now it is a 360 audio microphone ambisonics and I use that when I'm doing the the post on this so I can get the exact angle I want on what I'm saying I don't have to position it just have to keep it out of frame and close to the subject or subjects if you're doing an interview and it works pretty well now the lights you can see light here and a light here and then I've got the main one right here that's just aimed at one side keeps the other side kind of in shadow looks great so this is the raw footage of how this looks when I bring this into edit. I edit in Final Cut Pro. I want to talk about the distance between me and that green screen. This was just something we got off Amazon, not too pricey, but I'm actually spacing myself out a little bit. I want to be more in front of these lights so that they're not shining on my face. I could lean back you'll see that it changes how that lights on my face. It would give me more room on the green screen, but since I don't do a whole lot, uh, I'm not doing a lot of like wild hand motions here. Uh, I like to be able to keep the green screen a little bit better lit. Now you can see right here, it gets a little darker. I could really use longer lights or more of those ones. But in Final Cut, we're able to really still key this out, even though it's a little darker here and a little darker up there, where you'll see that we're able to key it out. It is important that I don't wear green shirts or even green ties. I don't know if you noticed, but whenever I wear a tie in these videos, it's always a different tie. I haven't repeated any of them yet. I have a huge tie collection, so... I love being able to wear a different tie every time. Most of them are from Eastern Europe or Central Europe, um, just because that's the place I collect ties from. But so far, I haven't worn any green ones. Mostly browns, yellows, and oranges, sometimes blues. But these don't get keyed out, because if we do a green screen, anything that's in the image that's green will get pulled out. So you gotta be careful about that. And for all of you Logic users, Final Cut has access to majority of the Logic 10 audio effects, so you're gonna feel right at home if you were to use that. So what do we do? After we have this footage, we're going to take out the cards of the camera and of the audio device, and I'm going to import them into my computer for editing. So let's move there, and I'll show you what I do with it at that point. So here we are. We are going to now start working with our files a little bit. I'm gonna start a new folder in my movies area here. Actually, we'll just put it, yeah, we'll put it right down at the bottom. So this will be explanation video. Okay. So I'm going to, I've got my H3 VR audio recorder the little card from it pulled out, inserted it in my computer. I'm gonna pull that on. 
That'll just take a second. It's a pretty small file. But let's export this now. And I'm going to start the video file as well. That one will take a little bit longer. But I'm going to do this all real time. Plug that into the back of my computer. There we go. And we'll pull this one. Now, these files sometimes get split into multiple files. Just depends on how big they are because there's a, a file size limit just after 4 gigs. But we were at 3.8 or 0 .08, so we're okay. So we're going to let that start copying in. Another thing that I needed for the recorder was the Rode uh, Ambisonics plugin. I'll show you what this looks like. But let's open up Logic so we can actually start working now on getting the audio ready. Because it's in an Ambisonics format, there's a real good reason why I do it that way. But let's get this set up and I'll show you as we do it. So project settings, audio, we have to change our surround format to quadraphonic for the ambisonics. Now we're going to, and that video is already done, that's pretty fast. We're going to pull this audio out. going to separate the files. We're going to create new tracks. We're going to change the project, not convert the files. And then here momentarily we'll have that ready to go. So this will come out onto four different audio tracks. There they are. We can get rid of that top one now. Let's zoom out a little bit. You can see where we were talking. The gain looks like it might have been a little bit low, but sometimes I'm leaning in. So I just usually keep it a little bit of safe level. I'm going to come through here and select all of my tracks. That's an instant group. We're going to choose surround sound for all of them. And then I have to pan them out. So I have to follow the panning order that is associated with ambisonics. So put it in the right place. I'm just going to turn off the other speakers. Right at 45. Pull this one down here, 135, and then we have one last one. So this puts each of those four microphone feeds into the right place for the ambisonics. And then on my master track, not an EQ, we don't want an EQ. I'm going to put the Rode Soundfield plugin. Now, this is a free plugin right now by Rode. So, if you have any kind of ambisonic source material, you could use it. What I'm going to do, really simply put, is just push play. And I'm going to set the input to be the same format. It's a B format, AMBX. That's what the microphone uses. And the output, I could do mono if I wanted to, but I'm going to do stereo because there's some stuff that happens that, in stereo that could be useful. And then I'm going to move around these two circles so that what we're hearing is exactly what's coming from my voice. So I can actually pinpoint. This is like reverse engineering a stereo field from a 360 microphone. This is pretty cool. So what you're going to hear next is me talking from the video portion. And I'm going to move these around to match. And I use that when I'm doing the, the post on this so I can get the exact angle I want 
on what I'm saying. I don't have to position it. Just have to keep it out of frame and close to the subject. Now, I'm going to move this around to the reverse side for a second and hear how the sound changes. Subject or subjects if you're doing an interview and it works pretty well. Now the lights, you can see light here and the light here. And then I've got the main one right here that's just aimed at one side, keeps the other side kind of in shadow, looks great. Okay, now I've got that isolated pretty well. Narrow on the stereo image. It's gonna give it a strong central part. I've got this aimed in the right place. All I have to do now is export my project and it will line up with the videos that we have. So let's do a bounce out project or selection. PCM, we'll do 24. And I think, let's just double check. I didn't actually look too closely. Let's um, customize. I wanna see my sample rate just to make sure I'm not getting it converted at all. So it is 48. Perfect, project or selection. 2448, so we're matching the sample rate, going into resolution of 24 bits. Not doing a surround bounce. Just want this to be stereo. But because this is just dialogue, I am gonna normalize it so that it get, pulls it up to zero for the loudest peak. Don't typically do that except in these cases. I mean, these videos are not gonna be like audiophile quality check. Go back down to our folder. We'll say voice stereo so I know. And then it's gonna do a non real time bounce. And then our work in logic is essentially done. Normalizing it, I'm gonna quit. I'm not even gonna save this. I don't often save those because I don't find a lot of point in it. Now I am on my audio music computer instead of my post computer, partly because it's in the quiet room and I do audio recording and things. But that means some of what's gonna happen next is gonna be a little laggy, especially with screen capture. Not the end of the world. If I really need to take a break and do this on the other computer, I will but we'll see how it goes. So inside Final Cut, I'm gonna do a new event. We're gonna call this the explanation video and have it automatically create a new project and we're not gonna use custom settings. We're gonna set based on the first video clip properties so let's go down here, explanation video. And this is gonna be the intro video. Part of the reason why I do a separate intro video is because when I do green screen work, I'm actually filming at 4K 60 frames per second. And that's pretty heavy duty so I want to do the intro, get the key effect taken care of, get that all prepped, export it as 1080, which is still great quality, but takes up a lot less processing. And then I can use all my other stuff like the screen capture that I'm doing right now with you. Okay, so here is this. Uh, we're set to proxy, so let's just do original. There we go. Now, there's a lot to this that I'm not going to explain. And part of that is just simply because uh, I don't want to, it would take a lot of, long time to really get into it. And so we're not going to explain all the finer details of how to use Final Cut Pro, but I am going to do a quick pass at this so you can see what's happening. Now, because with this video, it's an explanation of green screen, 
I'm actually going to do two things with this. I'm going to export this once, just as it is, as a 1080 video. Let's see if there's anything else I need to change in here. Nope. It's going to be about 311 megabytes. So let's get that started right now. And the reason why I'm doing it like this is because I'm going to potentially be showing you some of it before the green screen gets actually edited. And I want to be able to go back and forth between them. So now this is going to be editing. Here's the, the sharing percentage in the process progress bar. And it's going to go pretty slow at the beginning, partly because I'm also going to be doing other things at the same time. And it's converting from 4K down to 1080 on not the best computer that's ever been done with video editing. Anyway. It would be a lot faster on the other computer. We're going to let it work in the background. That being said, let's make a new project in here. Because I don't want to mess up the other export. So we can make as many projects here as we want. Let's change our views here though. I want to make these small single clips. There we go. Okay. Check it out. That sharing is still happening. It'll happen in the background. That's fine. Now for this, I actually want to do the process now of having a full keyed out version of the video. So we're going to come down to our different effects. That's this tab right here. Under keying, we have a keyer. This is super easy inside here. You'll see right off the bat that not all of it's removed. There's some of the darker parts of the green that didn't quite get pulled out. So inside my keyer effect area, I'm just going to click on sample color and pull out the rest of that. Like that. Now, because I didn't have a lot of green on me, my shirt or, you know, my skin color, it did actually take a little bit out of that. Watch this as I deactivate the keyer. There's a teeny shift on my skin, teeny, 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 but not really enough to worry about. Next, I'm going to do the second part of that, and that's with a mask. I'm going to use the draw mask, drag it on, and then all I do is add points right around the inside of this. And it's going to remove all of the other part of that. So that allows me now to really quickly, as you can see, have a full removal of the background, the parts that weren't there and the green screen. And so let's go through the setup right here. I've got, you're going to hear some handling noise. This is the microphone you're hearing right now. It is a 360 audio microphone, Ambisonics. And I use that when I'm doing the, the post on this so I can get the exact angle I want on what I'm saying. I don't have to position it. Just have to keep it out of frame. Now, every once in a while, you do see a shadow coming in there. And a lot of that's because I'm doing things a little differently and leaning around. Um, I'm not going to worry about that, especially in an explainer video like this, because 
it's not i wouldn't i would have a different expectation for what i'm doing if this was the full video so i wouldn't be moving quite the same way or leaning in the same way you can see i'm reaching off screen a few times etc so we're going to leave that now the next thing i'm going to do because it actually does make sense in this phase i'm going to put the background uh, and then that's going to be burned in when i do the export so I have to make sure it's the background I want to use, but I want to do it at the higher quality 4K before it gets downsized into the 1080. So we're going to come over here to our generators. We have backgrounds. We have elements. Let's just go to all generators, and we'll do it not the 360 gradient. We'll do it just a normal gradient. We're going to pull this down. And over and recently I've been favoring the radio which does more of a circle and then I've got some points and things I can do here in terms of locating them in the right place so let's put it right in the back here and I'm going to change the colors. I don't mind this one so much. This one's not bad. But I don't really like the blue. So let's do... You could do any color you want, but... We're going to do this one with a little bit of gray. The other thing, then, is that I need to change my location. So we're going to do a transform... And I'm also going to do a scale. So now I can get this scaled more in the right place. Because it's 4K, I can zoom up decently and it's going to be fine. There I am moving here. around. So. Now you're on that camera. You'll notice it gets a little fuzzy when I push play. Part of that is because I have my viewing options for better performance. On a computer like this, I need the better performance. If I wanted to see full quality, I'd switch it there. Camera that's on a tripod. And so let's go through the setup right here. And it's going to be a little bit more jumpy. So I have to do better performance right now when I push play. That's totally fine. I'm not too worried about it. Okay, so we're getting pretty much nowhere on that share. But we're ready to also share this one. This is the one we're going to share as well. We can do titles and all the editing later. But we just need to get this into 1080. So we're going to start the export on this. And then I'm going to pause everything. So that way we have all of this done before we get started again. Okay, so we'll be right back. Okay, so the videos are both exported. What I'm going to do now is start putting it all together. We're going to do one more project. And this is the, the full video. And we're going to come out here to where we had those. So we have this one here, which is without the key taking place yet. That'll set up our timeline. So with Final Cut, everything gets set based on the video that you first drag in. So that's why I'm going to drag that one in so it just sets it all up correctly. I'll drag this one in as well. We could probably... Let's go ahead and put this on top of it. We're going to cut through them. Okay, so there's there. those two things are now done. One more thing I need to do 
is bring in a video I made with my phone. So we're going to do that as well. I'm going to get ready to send these directly over via airdrop from my phone to the Mac Mini. Those are on their way. As soon as they're done, I'm going to pull them in. I don't remember which one is which, so I'm just going to do both of them. Okay, so that shows a little bit more. We're going to pull these to the very beginning of the project. And then we have one more thing to bring in. And that is the voice track now. And we'll need to start lining some stuff up with that. Now, there are some tools which allow us to select everything and it will time sync it. But I'm not as worried about that right now. Um, partially because I think it's just going to be easier in some ways to do this uh, this way here. So let's trim this down a little bit. We'll move it over. So the very first thing is this intro. And we're going to just eyeball this up. It looks like it's the right place. Let's listen and see if we hear double. Hey everybody, today we're going to be doing something just a little bit different. I'm going to be showing you how I've been making my videos of late. We're going to talk about... So, here's the difference between the two audio tracks. This is the one that was just off the camera. Hey everybody, today we're going to be doing something just a little bit different. I'm going to be showing you... And then we had this one here, which was off of the microphone hey everybody today we're gonna to be doing something now it's not horrible and actually we're gonna use the h3 vr for the first section but then i walk around the room and it moves away from where it was uh, the microphone didn't move with me just the phone did so i'm going to use this at the very beginning just because it can be such a distraction sometimes to have uh, audio that sounds not great right off the bat so as long as the first part sounds okay once i start moving around i think we're going to be okay hey everybody today we're going to be doing something just a little bit different okay so there's that um that ends right here next i need to figure out what this stuff sounds like so i'm going to mute this part so you can see I'm using three different lights. So I need to figure out. Let's turn those off and then we'll turn this one back on. I'm just going to listen for a second. <clears throat> Getting centered here. So. So you can see I'm using three different. Okay, so that's where this one is right here. So. We are going to move this into place just like that. So I'm doing a lot of eyeballing right this moment, but that's okay. I think for this section, we're going to delete that. You'll notice the magnetic timeline in Final Cut. Everything just always shifts over. It's fine for what we're doing. Around. So you can see I'm using three different lights to light the green screen. They're not really designed for that, but they're working pretty well. And then one here to light the face. I've got my Osmo Pocket on a tripod with a Wi-Fi adapter so that I can hear and see what I'm doing, so I can see what I'm doing. And then I've got the Zoom H3 VR, which I'll explain why I'm using that later, but it's a great little setup. Now I'm going to switch over to the actual Pocket Osmo. Okay, so then I got to match the next section here with what's happening. So let's do turn that one off for a second and we'll turn this one back on. 
getting centered here. It's getting centered here. So let's turn it back off. I think it was right around here. Getting centered. Okay, so we're going to trim all of that and move this over. Yeah, that looks right. right. So, zoom in a little bit. And that looks fine. I'm going to turn down the sound on those two clips. Getting sent. I'll do a blade right at the beginning of this, up across all of it. Delete them. Getting centered here. So now you're on center and centered here. We don't need that part because I got rid of the part where I'm moving around. Although I don't know. Let's let's go back for one second. Yeah, so let's actually put this back on, but turn it way down so that it doesn't really overextend. Getting centered here. So now you're on that camera that's on the tripod. And so let's go through the setup right here. I've got you're going to hear some handling noise. This is the microphone you're hearing right now. It is uh, 360. Okay, that's all fine. We're going to leave a lot of this in place. But I want to switch it at some point. Over. So I'm going to deactivate that one. You can see light here and a light here. And then I've got the main one right here that's just aimed at one side, keeps the other side kind of in shadow. Looks great. So this is. That's pretty much it. At this point, what I do is edit everything. Pull things out as they need to be. I can remove some sections if I need to. And then make sure everything's where it needs to be for this. So the video is starting here at the beginning. Hey everybody, today we're going to be doing something just a little bit different. Now I'm not going to do too much with this except I want to match. In this case, let's turn off skimming for a minute so I don't hear all the skimming. So I can see it, but not hear it. I do want to match a little bit of the color for a second. So I'm going to come through here. I'm going to match color and I'm going to choose the Osmo. It's a little bit better match. Still the green's a little different. So I'm going to come through and I'm going to change my exposure just a little bit. The exposure so that it does look a little bit more just to match that just a little bit. Okay. That's part of it. And now I'm going to put on Let's see a title here. So we got titles. Let's expand this over just a little bit. We we'll use the basic lower third. I've been doing this on all my videos. So Professor Sam McGuire. And I'll put the university name here. And then I am going to also come through and do a little bit of a drop shadow. Let's see. I think that's probably in here. There we are. So that it pops out just a little bit more, a little bit more blur, a little bit more distance. 
And I want to actually move the whole thing. So position, we're going to move it down. And we'll move this over to the left just a little bit. It's really interesting being on the white shirt right there. I'm going to try. We'll tr uh, try this a little different. The face. Let's do it black this time today. And that's just because of the white shirt when it's there. I'm not even sure at that point then if I need to do a drop shadow, so we'll take it off. Hey everybody, today we're going to be doing something just a little bit different. I'm going to be showing you how I've been making my videos of late. We're going to talk about my green screen tech, we're going to talk about my microphone, and how we put it all together after we're done filming so that it all works. So first, let me switch my camera around. So you can see I'm using three different lights, two to light the green screen. They're not really designed for that, but they're working pretty well. And then one here to light the face. I've got... Okay, I'm going to be doing some final editing and things like that of this because now what we're doing is adding a whole new section and that is with the screen recording software I'm using. So now what I'm doing, let's actually do this real quickly here. Let's, let's see, let's go into, oh, it's not showing up at all. Um, so you can't see it, but I'm using this program called ScreenFlow. And screen flow is what's capturing the screen that I'm using now to do this demonstration. And it is capturing a microphone. I'm using an SC Electronics USB 2200A microphone. And I've got an SC Electronics reflection filter. It's a device that goes around the microphone so you don't hear the weird reflections. It isn't perfect, but I'm in a small room and it tempers that a little bit. So you get a little bit less of the small room sound. All of that then goes into what we're doing here. I'm going to open up the first half before we did the export of the videos. So you can see what that looks like. So this is the whole editor I use. I'm going to do a single pass edit on this and I will export it and then I'll do the video I'm making right now. I will edit that, export it. Both of those then will go into Final Cut in here and I'll do one final export of the entire thing. I'll make sure my audio levels are decent I'll try to get rid of anything that is distracting. I will go through and make sure that transitions are smooth. And after that's all said and done, I will have this exported file. I will upload that to YouTube. So that's my process from beginning to end. You're not gonna be able to see it all because some of this has to happen without being recorded. Uh, but I think for the most part, uh, this is a really, inclusive explanation of how my process works when I make these type of videos. Okay, hope you enjoyed this a little bit differently. Still some pieces with audio and video editing. So I hope that you're finding that part useful and I hope that you get inspired. Sure, you might not have a green screen, but I started making my first green screen videos with a sheet for my Kia that was green and just normal lights in the room. And once in a while, I would just get another piece of equipment or something else that I could use with this and incorporate it as the best as I could. So it just, you build and you build and you build and you finally get to the point where you are happy with the quality and you have a workflow that you understand and can do pretty easily. Okay, that's it. Hope you're having a great day and we'll do more logic oriented videos soon.